30 years, the later group has been building Mumbai's soaring heights. Founded in 1980 by Mangal Prabhat Lodak, currently serving his fourth term as a member of the Legislative Assembly in Mumbai from the BJP. With the chairman involved in politics, it was left to his sons Abhishek and Abhinandan to steer Lodha forward. Abhishek, an industrial and systems engineer from Georgia Tech and a former consultant with McKinsey in Atlanta, and Abhinandan, an MBA from Cardiff, joined the family business in 2003. In the process of developing close to 30 million square feet of prime real estate, the Loda brothers made an impact with high-end luxury housing, but now aim to provide high-quality affordable housing for the aspirational Indian. With over 38 projects underway in and around Mumbai, the Loda group is clear. It has no pan-India plans, even though it has made inroads into markets like Hyderabad and Pune. Having received one of the largest FDIs in the real estate sector in 2007 from Deutsche Bank Singapore, Abhishek and Abhinandan are now looking for capital through a public listing. We talked to the loaders about the real estate bust, plans for their IPO, the Dubai crisis and running a real estate family business. Many thanks for joining us on the show. Abhinandan, let me start by asking you because, you know, you've been around for less time in the business than Abhishek actually has been. And last year was perhaps the worst year that the real estate business, not just in India, but globally could have seen. What to your mind was the big lesson? I think the one learning uh, from last year was that there is, there is a reality between what the market really wants and what you need to offer. And you need to move away from what are construed theories of growth capital and construed theories of demand etc. and move, to, move towards reality. Uh. And liquidity driven growth will not sustain the long run. It is consumption driven demand which is required for an, for an economy to grow and for an organization to grow. So the reality check, has it sunk in Abhishek you think? It's been a great learning experience over the last 12 months. I think uh, 2006 to early 2008 was robust growth and that, yeah. was, that was great. But I think and, the last and nobody believed the party would ever end. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's, it's taught us what, what really creates value, what doesn't. Uh, what, what is uh, effort well done and what is effort wasted. The real estate business globally but more so in India has always been this sort of seen as this disorganized sector in that sense. Corruption, the nexus with politics and so on and so forth. Has it really gotten more efficient as it gets more organized? Uh, definitely over the last five years a significant move towards making the business a lot more professional in the way it's done. Mm. Uh, I think uh, better talent is making a significant difference to which companies do well and which don't and uh, th the only way to get good talent and to retain it is to make sure that you're transparent in the way you're doing things mm. there are certain pitfalls of doing real estate which exist in India which exists across the globe mm. and that is something which is not going to change very easily you know some of the things that you mentioned mm. but definitely uh, on the consumer side in the things you do internally how you deal with external suppliers that mm. part of the business has definitely matured a lot how much is it also on account of the fact that a lot of people like you are actually going to now you know tap the capital markets do an IPO get listed and and that requires most players to actually follow certain corporate governance norms so how much of the business is actually changing as you actually go hunt for capital I think the hunt for capital is definitely one one part of the improvement in the process but I don't think it's only public capital I think you know uh, we've got about 600 million dollars over the last yeah. three years yeah. and that automatically requires that you make improvements uh, in, in a certain practices which were followed okay. uh, uh, followed earlier clearly uh, you know the capital availability for growth as well as the, what the consumer now expects from graded developers mm. which is driving the move towards having a more transparent more process based way of doing business but do you see a sort of herd mentality especially as as the Indian real estate space is concerned because you know when you see fundraising everybody goes raises funds together using the QIP route when you're actually talking about moving to affordable housing the entire industry goes from luxury to affordable housing pretty much at the same time are you are you sort of sensing this predictability this kind of herd mentality within the Indian real estate space at this point over the next five years you'll see that you know players will get differentiated between themselves they already it's happened mm -hmm. and it will further get differentiated based on their abilities their way of doing business and you know uh, their maturity etc if you look at these herd mentality closely, you will see there are often first movers and then everybody else follows and the first mover takes an advantage. Even though about 10, 12, 15 companies have expressed their desire to go public, uh, I think it will be a slow and steady process. 
where where the the best and the uh, and the brightest will come out first. Are you feeling tentative and apprehensive because just when we thought that you know things were beginning to turn around, we've had Dubai happen. So are you feeling a bit tentative at this point in time as you sort of get ready to do the IPO? Sure, Dubai was uh, uh, was was something which is ripe in everybody's mind that it will actually burst at some point in time. Mm -hmm. I mean, we saw 33 percent exodus of Indian population from Dubai over the last uh, 18 months, and people had really begun to realize that beyond a point, this was just investor-driven demand mm -hmm. with no end. Is actually happening. There were towers and towers built out, but nobody actually living in them. Mm. And it followed the cycle, which it always follows globally. That beyond the point, the bubble has to burst. Mm. But the Indian uh, economic scenario is, is, I think, fairly different, mm. and the demand is extremely real. And here it is more uh, the ability to actually uh, supply to that demand than than the than the reality of the demand, which is sure. While it may not impact demand in India, but just in terms of funds, and you know, this is really the time when everybody is going around looking for funds. Do you think the the enthusiasm, uh, you know, which we were seeing return, uh, maybe that's going to ebb yeah, or dry up? I think clearly, uh, in spite of what actually happened, they are very very clear that that uh, globally there is uh, an Enormous amount of need for putting uh, capital into India and China, mm -hmm. and within India, people are looking for different. Uh, real estate is, is a story which attracts more people, mm -hmm. uh, and they're looking for a differentiated organization to put capital into. And if there is a differentiated organization, capital is definitely not a constraint. Well, talking about the big event, and that's the IPO that you are planning. Most of loose ends tied up. You've already filed your DRHP. We filed a DRHP with SEBI in late September. And now uh, have uh, had a couple of rounds of queries from SEBI, which we've answered. Uh, uh, we are waiting for SEBI to come back with his clearance, and thereafter, you know, we'll be in a state of preparedness to, uh, you know, go to the pub to the public markets based on the market conditions and the, you know, the input from various investors. What uh, is the tentative timeline that you have in mind? The early part of 2010 is 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 what it, what looks likely, but you know, uh, there's so many variables uh, in this. Uh, are you worried option. about any particular variable at this point? Uh, no, I think at this point in time. Uh, the um, the markets look decent. Uh, uh, our company has been recognized and received well as a potential investment opportunity by various quarters. But in terms of pricing, because that's really going to hold the key as far as the success of the IPO is concerned, and we've seen a whole spate of IPOs that perhaps have been overpriced. So that's the sense that we get from the market. You know, what's the thought uh, really at this point in time in terms of pricing? Uh, I think the thought is uh, clear that we're going to the markets for the first time and. Uh, Uh, as an organization, we we believe we created value, and that value will get demonstrated over a period of time. So anybody uh, who will be investing in our IPO should end up, uh, you know, making money out of it. Mm. And we believe we will leave a good amount of value on the table for it to make it make it not an attractive proposition loan for investors, but to make it a good long term bet for people mm. to recognize that you know three years ago I put money into low dive see this is where I've moved on. So not too aggressive on the pricing front. That's that's very clear between yeah. the both of you. What do you intend to do as far as this IPO money is concerned? Because I understand there's about thousand crore. Fees in debt, and you will use some of the proceeds to retire the debt, and you will fund some of your expansion plans. Broadly, give us a sense of what you'd like to do. A very small percentage, only about 300 crores, uh, goes into debt repayment. That's what's estimated. A significant amount of the money is going towards the expansion and development of the current uh, assets that we own. We have about 4,000 plus acres of land in and around Mumbai, mm -hmm. and uh, we believe that we want to uh, develop a significant amount of infrastructure uh, in some of those large land holdings to create this proportionate value. Because typically the Cycle in real estate is build the house, then build the roads, and then build the school. Yeah. Uh, whereas it ought to be build the road, build the school, then build the house. Right. And uh, that's exactly what we intend to do. So about eight eight hundred odd crores of the capital we raise will go towards infrastructure development in some of our key land holdings. Mm -hmm. About six hundred crores is, go is, uh, is going to be used towards working capital needs of the mm -hmm. company, uh, construction capital, etc. Mm -hmm. And the remaining amount of about eleven hundred crores is what we intend to use for opportunistic land acquisition in Mumbai. But the focus will continue to be Mumbai, right? Yes. Uh, we're very you don't have any aspirations of being a pan-India player. You don't want to take on the DLFs and the Unitex. We have no aspirations of being a pan-India player. Our aspiration is to be the best real estate company, not necessarily the biggest. Mm -hmm. uh, we have started outside Mumbai with a, a, a medium-sized project in Hyderabad, which has done very yeah. well in spite of the trying market conditions there. Yeah. But we believe that Mumbai offers is the best real estate market in India. It offers significant supply demand imbalances, which are going to take a long time to get served, mm -hmm. and offers. Offers good margins. So, give me a sense of what it will look like for you in the five, next five to six years. We'll be developing close to 60 million square feet over the next six years' time, out of which 30 million square feet are already off the ground. 
So that's in terms of pure numbers. In terms of uh, sales, that would amount to close to seven to eight billion dollars worth of sales. Mm -hmm. uh, at an uh, you know such an annual sale rate of almost one point four billion dollars. We are online to to achieve what we projected out as targets for this year. Okay. And based on that, the growth does not look uh, dis dis disproportionate to manage. Mm -hmm. So I think that's that's where we really are.